Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cook with Brooke, the cooking show that doesn't have any food. This is all about what's cooking at the Air Force Enlisted Village. And can you believe it? This is our 20th episode of Cook with Brooke. It has been an amazing time uh, just learning about this and sharing and using this as a way to communicate with both our people that donate to us obviously our residents and then just friends that happen to tune in so uh, it, it, it's been a lot of fun we're going to continue doing this it's become a very useful tool for us to be able to share what's happening around the village so first off just let me quickly talk about covid um, I, i'm super happy to report that uh, we have no cases on the air force enlisted village uh, we have no staff members that are positive. We have no staff members that are quarantined or under suspicion of quarantine. So it has uh, uh, been a remarkable turnaround uh, from where we were about two months ago to when we had two to three people on campus at any given time that were either quarantined because of a potential exposure or actually had COVID and were making sure that they were staying safe. And of course you can go back and you can look at the calendar and you can see when we started getting vaccines and it was about two months ago. So the vaccine is working and it has really made a huge difference. So thank you to everybody that got the vaccine. There are some residents that still need to get it and uh, understand there may be some hesitancy about that, but uh, we, we can see it. You can see it in the day-to-day the -day living that we have here at the village of how this works. So please consider that. And of course, for the team members or staff members, uh, same goes for you. You know, this is about protecting our family, uh, both our work family and our home families, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that COVID uh, is put down and stays down. Uh, and, and you can see across the country with the vaccinations that are available and the number of people that are getting them that, you know, things are really starting to look like we're turning the corner on this. So uh, if you haven't taken that step and done your part to help out, please consider it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me or Bobby Joe or Terry over the Hawthorne House. Be glad to fill you in. So that's what's happening with COVID. Uh, we are also going to talk a little bit about pets. And so uh, this, as a matter of fact, uh, our special guest today is Carter Zorn, who is a veterinarian here in Fort Walton Beach. And we're going to ask him a little bit uh, to share some of his experience about pets. So it, you'll be very informed by it. It's, uh, it's really good and it's, uh, it's going to be something that will enlighten you uh, and be very useful to you. Um, we're glad that we're able to do this. Uh, we have considered this for a long, long time. Um, and I'll tell you, we're not going to do um, big dogs. We're not going to have animals running all over the place. We're going to do dogs and cats, small dogs under the uh, 25 pound range, something that someone can carry with them, someone that, uh, something that someone can control easily. So uh, we're, we're being very, very caref careful with this. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're doing the right things and we wanna see exactly how this works. And uh, if, if, we, if we need to make adjustments, we will do so. So uh, thanks to all the team that's helped us put together this and for the people that have uh, let us know what their opinions are, both good and bad as far as uh, what your preference is regarding pets. Uh, but we see this as an important step for our community uh, because at the end of the day, you know, one of the most um, dangerous things for someone as they age is isolation. Uh, and, and pets can help you with that isolation. So anyway, we, we think it's a great thing for our community. Um, we're going to go over to uh, Knife's Edge and take a look at the menu in just a second. But before we do, we're going to talk about some jokes. And I knew you were waiting on those jokes, so I brought three of them today. And of course, they're going to be dog jokes. So the question is, why aren't dogs good dancers? Because they have two left feet. <laughs> uh, and what do you call a, a cold dog? That'd be a chili dog. And how do dog catchers get paid? By the pound. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for the bad jokes. You got three of them. You got a bonus question or a bonus joke this week. So we're going to cut over to Carrie Knife and ask her to tell us what's on the menu over at her fantastic restaurant. We'll be right back.
Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, Fantastic menu from Carrie and her team over at Knife's Edge. We, I, as always, we really appreciate uh, her being part of our community and taking care of our residents. So today we have this fine gentleman, Carter Zorn, and Carter and I used to be neighbors, which is how I got to know him. His lovely wife, Carol, and their two wonderful kids, uh, Henry and Charlie. Uh, Maria and I watched them for a couple years when the kids were really small and they had dogs running around in the backyard and it was just, it was a beautiful family. Uh, we've got to know them over time. So Carter is a veterinarian with the Friendship uh, Animal Hospital, correct? Yeah, that's yep. right. That's okay. Right. Uh, and he's going to come on today and we're going to talk a little bit about pets. Uh, you know, we've been talking about bringing them into the campus and so we're doing that slowly, but we thought it'd be important to talk about some of the good things with, with pets and then obviously maybe some of the bad things or th some of the risks that go along with it. So uh, we'll start off and I'll ask Carter to introduce himself a little more than I already have uh, and tell us a little bit about uh, himself and his uh, experience as a vet. Awesome. Rick, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, excited to be here. Um, just a little background on the hospital. Friendship has been around since the early 70s in town. It's on Beale Parkway, and I think a lot of people have seen it over the years. I've been there since 2008, so I've been there about 13 years now. Mm -hmm. And right now we have myself and five other veterinarians that are there, um, and we stay really busy taking care of dogs and cats and, and a multitude of other creatures. <laughs> um, as far as my personal background, uh, I did both my undergrad and vet school at Auburn, um, and I came straight from Auburn and moved down to this area, and I've been here uh, since 2008. So um, it's a great place to live, it's right. a great place to work, and uh, we have a lot of fun every day. Yeah, well, it's great. So uh, we have been talking with the residents about pets and we're going to have some limitations on pets you know we're not going to have big dogs we've decided that 25 and under is about the right size for uh, a pet in an apartment with a, an older resident so um, maybe cats as well and then some other things what in your experience what are some of the benefits of pet ownership especially for people that may be suffering through um, isolation or loneliness yeah so we think there's a lot of benefits to pet ownership, and these can come both in, in physical benefits, but they can also come in mental benefits. And there's been several studies from big organizations that have looked at this, but uh, you know, if we summarize it, we think that uh, pets generally increase people's quality of life. So if we look at all factors together and, su and survey those people, people report a happier quality of life with pets as a companion. And that manifests several different ways. So it may manifest as decreased loneliness, somebody to share experiences with. Mm -hmm. I talk to my dogs and uh, cats, <laughs> so uh, you can sure. do that even though they don't talk back. Um, we also talk about other physical benefits. Uh, there's lower rates of heart disease in people that have pets, and there's lower blood pressure in people that have pets. And so uh, it can help people that have other uh, medical problems to, to help mm -hmm. cope with those. We also see that pets tend to get people out more. So we see improved mobility with people that have pets, and that's mostly as in people out walking their dog regularly. Right. We also see more social interactions with people that have pets because they're more likely to encounter somebody else as they're both walking their pets. Mm -hmm. So lots of benefits to pet ownership, for sure. Wow, that's great. Um, so we're going to uh, cut away. We're going to go take a look at the uh, February birthdays, and then we're going to come back in the second segment, and we're going to talk about maybe some of the things that you may want to consider if you're one of those residents that thinks, that, ah, now I can finally get a dog. Um, we'll talk through some of those things. Just make sure it really is the right thing to do, and we'll talk a little bit about what the process is going to be for you as you want to uh, change your lease with us to be able to add a pet. So we'll be right back with uh, February, after the February birthdays. Day. 
All right, welcome back. And obviously those are March birthdays, not February birthdays. So um, uh, Scarlett was taping that and she said, they're gonna be emailing us, telling us that we have the wrong month. So we'll, we'll come clean and say right now that uh, uh, it was a big mistake, but please, uh, uh, again, happy birthday to all of the March babies. So we're back with Carter Zorn and we're talking about pets and uh, we've talked about some of the good things and there are a lot of really good things, but there's also potentially some things that people should consider uh, if they're going to get a dog uh, or maybe a cat. So um, what are some of the things that you have seen that would maybe be a consideration before somebody uh, decides to do that? So there's a lot of things to consider before you choose a pet. Uh, and that may be the type of pet, whether you want to look at higher maintenance pets like dogs, kind of middle maintenance pets like cats, or even super low maintenance pets like fish. Um, there's also things like cost of upkeep to consider. So you have feeding costs, you have things like trainers, training costs, you have veterinary costs, mm -hmm. um, and all those things can be factored in. And there's lots of resources available to help you help guide you on what those costs may be going forward. Um, once you've selected the type of pet you want, if we use the example of dogs, you may want to look at the specific breed that you want. Mm -hmm. And so in our case, we're probably talking mostly about smaller breed dogs. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of great small breed dogs. Some of them have different personalities than the other. And based on your goals, you may choose one over the other. And you may find some resources like a trainer or a veterinarian or certain breeders that can give you some insight into what breed may be best for you. Right. Um, I think there's also some other risks that you need to consider as well. We talk about other uh, uh, diseases or problems that may come along with pets. So things like slips, trips, and falls if you're out walking mm -hmm. your dog. If you have mobility problems, maybe you don't need something that you have to walk on a regular basis and you right. maybe look towards more like a cat. Mm -hmm. um, you also have things like bite and fight wounds that we want to be careful of. And so it's very uh, important that you select a pet that has a good demeanor mm -hmm. and if there's any behavioral problems that they're recognized and treated early. Right. We also need to talk a, a little bit about zoonotic disease and that's diseases that can be transmitted from pets to people. Mm -hmm. For the most part, pets that have uh, are otherwise healthy and owners that are otherwise healthy, there's fairly minimal risk other than what we talk about on a regular basis in our yearly visits to veterinarian. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that our dogs are vaccinated for rabies. We want to make sure that they're on monthly prevention to try and eliminate intestinal parasites. Right. But there are some problems, particularly if you encounter a person that has a compromised immune system. Mm -hmm. And those are things that you should talk to your doctor or talk to your physician about prior to getting a pet. Right. Um, but otherwise, most all the risks can be mitigated very well through um, preventative maintenance mm -hmm. and proper precaution. Yeah. Well, that's great. And that's, uh, you know, that's really uh, an important point that you bring up is that you make sure you're consulting with your doctor and you're talking about um, the type of animal that you would have and then weigh the pros and the cons. And uh, again, I, I know there are a lot of people that are very excited about this and people are thinking that they're going to rush right out and get one. But perhaps the right thing to do is to take measured steps and do your research and make sure that you end up with the right pet for you. But just like with anything, I think the more you put into it ahead of time, mm -hmm. as far as uh, research and investment early on, the happier you'll be down the road. Uh, I regularly have visits with people that come in that don't have a pet, that just want to talk about pets, that want to talk about what they might face. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Schedule a visit with your veterinarian and talk about what you might face in the future. Right. Talk to your doctor about it and do a lot of work. Right. And we also think too that, that there's probably work once you've acquired your pet too. So when you acquire your pet, it, it's not over then. You still have to look towards training, mm -hmm. making sure they're behaviorally appropriate, right. and make sure all their medical needs are met as well. Right. So uh, we are going to put your information up for the, the Friendship Animal Hospital. So if people have questions or people want to come and sit down and talk with you or one of your teammates down there and ask these type of questions and get more specifics, they can do so. Absolutely. So this has been very informative. I really appreciate you coming out and spending the time. And uh, you know, we're, again, we're excited about the opportunity for our residents to be able to have pets. But we want to make sure it's the right pet and we want to make sure that they're doing the right things for themselves at the end of the day. So thanks again for coming on. We appreciate you, sir. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Appreciate yes, it.